All right, we're starting uh, this live prayer session, um, the first of many, I hope. We'll see what the Lord does. Um, this is just something that's been on my heart for a while, uh, especially since I've been reading um, some accounts of Frank Bartleman. And Frank Bartleman was a, an evangelist who lived over 100 years ago. Um, just at the turn of the century, around 1906, um, he was instrumental in the Azusa Street Revival. And so he was an evangelist who prayed and prayed and prayed hours a day that God would do a work in California, God would do a work um, in Los Angeles, and that it would actually spread across the whole world. Uh, just prior to that, the Welsh Revival was taking place. People were getting saved by the hundreds, by the thousands. And so it created a hunger um, in the people that lived in California for God to do something there. You know, And so actually this, this, started, this desire started in me when I saw an account of the Brownsville Revival uh, in Pensacola, Florida um, from 20 years ago. And I just kind of stumbled upon a video of it, and I was very intrigued. Of course, I knew of uh, Dr. Michael Brown. He was a part of that revival, and I've been following him for a while, and that's how I stumbled on the video. But I just saw the hunger that people had for God, and it just really um, ignited in me a uh, desire to see that happen in my generation. Lord, you can do this. You can, you can bring revival to me, you can bring revival um, to where I live here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. You can bring it all over the world. And of course, you know, many people talk about revival. And you look at revivals throughout church history, and it takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of seeking the Lord. Uh, you look at the Layman's Prayer Revival of 1857. Uh, I believe through 1859, and it just started with one man who decided decided to have a prayer meeting in New York City, and he had it during the lunch hour, and people were facing difficult financial times at that point in history, and they needed the Lord, and so he said, let's have a prayer meeting, and at the first meeting, I think maybe one person showed up, and the next was a few and then, you know, 20 and then it was like 100 and pretty soon it started spreading all over um, New York and all over America. It became a huge revival. Uh, many people got saved and it was just regular everyday people, not clergy, not the pastors, not the um, people that are supposed to be the ones we expect are praying, but just everyday people like you and me just crying out to God and saying, God, I need you. Um, I, I can't live this life without you. I have nothing apart from you. And so along those lines, I'm going to start this, this prayer meeting, even if I'm the only one here, that's all right. Um, I'm just going to pray here. And if anyone happens to see this invitation, they can join and God willing, we'll do this again and again. And if it's something it's meant to be, it can, you know, uh, take wings, but whatever the case, I'm just going to seek the Lord here. So first thing I want to do is just read a passage out of the Bible and just say, Lord, guide me as I read your word. And this is what I, I open it up to right now. Just, just opening up my Bible at random. Uh, Isaiah 57. And it says down in verse 14. And let's just start with this actually in, in 13, but he who trusts, he who puts his trust in me, and this is uh, 13b, but he who puts his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. And then it says, and one shall say, heap it up, heap it up, prepare the way, take the stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. I love that. And I have that underlined because, you know, God, 
always, always resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so God has no time of day for people to think through all that. And I look at my own, own life and I say, a lot of times I walk in pride. I, I just have to admit it, you know, to come to a place and say, Lord, I have been prideful. Now I want to humble myself and recognize you are holy and I am not. Um, but you make me holy and I need more of you. And so he says he revives the heart of the contrite ones. And in verse 16, God says, For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry. For the spirit would fail before me and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covetousness, I was angry and struck him. I hid and was angry. And he went on backsliding in the way of his heart. Okay, so this is talking about anybody, you know. It could apply to any one of us that are backsliding, that um, maybe once walked with the Lord, once were seeking God, but then we got tangled up in things of the world. So easy to do, you know, pursuit of riches, pursuit of um, fame, pursuit of uh, pleasures, you know. It's just things that we can touch, things that we can see have a greater pull than God oftentimes because we don't see God and it takes effort to seek after him. He's invisible, but yet the Bible says, when we seek him, we will find him when we seek him with all of our heart. And so people that are backsliding, uh, people that once were seeking the Lord and turned away and, you know, all of us at one point backslide, even as Christians, even if it's only for a day, um, God wants us to be red hot for him all the time. And uh, that's a high calling, but he gives us grace and he gives us mercy when we backslide. We just have to be able to admit it. And it says, I have seen his ways here in verse 18. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will also lead him and restore comfort to him and to his mourners. So even though you know, we've backslidden in so many ways. God says, I will heal you. I will heal you and I will lead you and I'll restore comforts to you. So God will comfort and encourage us, even though we have backslidden. That is his promise. The question is, is are we, are we going to admit it? Are we going to turn to him? So I'm going to pray right now and just seek the Lord. Um, Father God, I come before you in Jesus' name. And um, you know, I'm the only one here in this, this meeting here, but that's okay. Because really, I'm not the only one here, Lord. You're with me. And uh, Lord, there's many other people all over the world that are praying even right now at this moment. And uh, I join with them too, Lord God. And I just pray that you would turn me closer to you. Um, turn my heart closer to you. Turn all of our hearts closer to you, Lord. Father, I pray that you would bring revival to this country. And um, I, I just I have to admit that I don't desire you like I should. I still, even now to this day, to this point, as I'm sitting here, I'm just all too easily contented with the things I can see. And um, so distracted by deadlines and pressures of this world and different things. But Lord, you created me to want you. You created me to desire you above all. So help me to do that, Lord. Help us to do that. Help your people to do that, Father God. Um, I pray for revival. I pray for revival here in my life, Lord, that first of all, you would place a hunger within me I prayed that before, Lord, but I pray it again. That first of all, I recognize that I'm not hungry for you like I should be. Create me a hunger that I ought to have, Lord, for you. And I think of Frank Bartleman who prayed for hours and hours. I've never done anything like that. And that might not necessarily be possible at this point in my life. It might not be possible for other people, but Lord, you know how much is possible in our lives and what things you know we fill our time with rather than praying and reading the Bible and, and different things that draw us close to you. 
So help us, Lord God, to desire after you and to say, Lord, we need you. Fill us to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. Um, if we don't have you, Lord, we have nothing at all. Lord, you are the reality. The things that we see are just fleeting. I mean, they are breaths of air that are here now and they're gone tomorrow, Lord, but you will remain. Your word will remain. So, Lord, give me and give your people a desire for you. Father God, I want to lift up my church. I've been praying for Bethel Church, Lord, that we would walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, that you'd open up our hearts to um, seek after you, to desire you, Lord God, to um, be able to pray for long amounts of time, Lord, until your presence comes, until you, you come like you've promised, Lord. You said, wait here, tarry here until you're clothed with power from on high. Lord, I pray that you put that desire in our hearts to, to pray and to seek you, you know, not just during the normal prayer times with the normal set prayers that we do, but Lord, we would seek you um, together in, in those times where, you know, it's not appointed times, just in, in a greater way. So Lord, give us that desire. Father God, I pray that you'd give um, your people a hunger for, for seeing people saved. And I just recognize, Lord, that I don't have that burden for lost souls like I should. I mean, I, I think I had that more even at one point. And, you know, there's people in this world that are dying and going to hell. And I need to have that burden for lost souls, Lord, that the people you put in my life that I would desire to see them saved, I would pray um, and intercede for them to be saved and be able to witness have the desire and the power to witness to them. So Lord, I pray for that. Um, I pray for um, healing, Lord, for your people too, that we could see miracles happen again. There's, um, there's such a you know, desire for supernatural in this world. There's many people that are looking for it in the wrong ways, you know, with the occult and all the stuff on TV, the witchcraft and different things. But Lord, you, you have the supernatural uh, gifts that people are desiring for, and Satan is the one that counterfeits them. But Lord, I pray that you would fill your people to overflowing with the Holy Spirit, and that you would give them these gifts, these spiritual gifts like tongues and healing, um, discernment, and prophecy, um, and uh, helps in different kinds of ministry and administration and preaching and teaching and all these different gifts um, for the building up of your body, the building up of the church, which is the people. So give these gifts, Lord, to your people. Um, and then give us a desire to seek after these gifts, Lord, that uh, you would be glorified, that we won't have these gifts just for ourselves to feel good about ourselves, but that we would encourage each other but also, Lord, that we would be drawn close to you because we want to experience joy in you, God. So, Father, that's all I can say is just um, you are merciful and grant repentance, Lord, that, that ability to change our minds, change our hearts, you know, to, to seek after you. Cleanse us, Lord God, from idolatry and all of its different forms, you know, from wanting other things more than you. And... Uh, just do a work, Lord, in your people. Father, for anybody out there um, that might listen in the future or whatever, just anybody out there that needs it, I pray for healing. I pray that you touch and encourage and strengthen them. Um, heal them of sickness. And thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. And you took our infirmities and sorrows on the cross. And you're the God that forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases. Some, Lord, that have loved ones that they're wanting to be saved, I pray that you would bring them to salvation and you would open up their hearts to receive the truth. You're not willing that any would perish, um, that all would come to repentance, Lord. So I pray you'd bring them to repentance and um, that you would show your love to them, Lord, because it's your love that really makes the difference. And I know for me, you know, that's what brought me to salvation was your love and Otherwise, I wouldn't have known I was saved, but you um, told me I was saved as I read your word, Lord, in John 17, and you said, 
Father, I want those whom you have given me to be with me where I am. And so I, I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to take you up on that offer. And you did it, Lord. You saved me. And Lord, would you do that for other people? Because I'm nobody special, Lord. You did that for me, even though I was rejecting you up until that point. Um, would you do that for you know my friends, Lord? I think of all my neighbors, Lord. I pray that you would do that for them and uh, bring them to salvation, Lord God. And the ones that know you, that they'd come to know you more, Lord God. I pray for Lenny and Jenny and Dwayne, Kirk and Steve and Jerry and Rick and Santiago and Aaron and Grant and Philip and Derek and Samson, Brian and Shane and Zach, Leslie and Emily and Ian and Ethan and Jay and Arnold and George, Bobber and Jason and uh, Silas, Torrance. Um, Lord, I pray for them and any others I forgot, Lord, to come to know you more in Jesus' name and, and to know you, Lord, for the first time. So, Lord, do this work. I'm going to keep seeking you, Lord God, somehow, somehow or another. Somehow or another, Lord God, I just believe that your presence is going to break out. And I don't know, Lord, if you want me to like do meetings in a, like a room here in Eau Claire or what. I don't want to do anything, Lord, that would undermine um, the authority of the church here. But Lord, I just want to see people saved and I want um, to see people come to know you and experience your presence like, like they did, Lord, back then at the Pentecostal revival. I want to, Lord, you can do these same things today. And I pray that you would, I pray that you would, again, help me and help others to be hungry for you and, and not to let you go, Lord, until you bless us according to your word, Lord, that you would... Um, you would come Lord like you've promised so father do that work I'm going to trust in you and believe that you will do it Lord God you'll bring revival to this land bring healing there's so many people Lord who so much discouragement and uh, divisiveness here in this country and Lord the main thing is people need to be saved that the name of Jesus would be lifted high Lord, that your name would be exalted above every other name. It already is exalted, Lord, but we need to exalt your name and lift it up. So help us to do that, God. You are a merciful God, Lord. Your word says that your mercy reaches to the heavens, your truth to the clouds. And that you can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. So, Lord, just please, I can't, I can't make you move or do anything, Lord. All I can do is just place myself here, Lord, and say, please, please do it, Lord, for your name's sake. And you want people to be saved, Lord. You want your name to be glorified. Do it for your name's sake. Father, I pray that you would bring some people along to share this burden with me, some people I can pray with, Lord God, that would also lay hold of this vision, Lord, for revival. Sometimes I wonder if I have strength, Lord, to keep seeking you for this. There's got to be more, Lord. There's got to be more of you to be had. Not just the same old, same old, Lord. There's got to be more. So, Lord, I'm going to keep seeking you. Thank you. I believe, Lord, you're, you're doing the work, and I'm not going to try to fake anything. But, Lord, when you do come, when your Holy Spirit does come, I'll be happy. I'll be happy to see you, Lord, experience you. So do it, Lord God, for your glory. Let this be real, Lord God. Let it be pleasing to you. Bless your holy name, Lord.
Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, um, if you happen to be watching this meeting, um, most likely, I, I think, actually, I can say positively, you'll be seeing the recording. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm going to post this, and I hope it encourages you. And I'm just going to keep seeking the Lord like this and do these live prayer meetings. And I know that this week kind of um, got off to a different start. I'm not going to say a bad start. I think it's always good to pray. It's always, it's always a success when we pray. Um, just was a little later than I had hoped. We had a, a family get together, birthday party, and uh, it was important that I attended that. But but um, I'll be on vacation this next week, so I'll be away from my computer. I, I can't do that uh, this coming week, but I want to have the prayer meeting again. Um, I guess that would be the 24th, and Friday might not be the best day either. Maybe another day would work better, but I'm just going to continue to do prayer meeting, I think, at least once a week to start with, and we'll just see what the Lord does. So anyway, God bless you, and uh, may the Lord draw you close to him and bless you completely in him um, out of his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. All right, God bless. We'll talk to you later.